Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions, Module 6, Chemical Kinetics. In this module, we have three lectures. One is uh, uh, Fundamentals of Chemical Reactions, where you have covered the basics of chemical kinetics. Second one is the reaction mechanisms. Here also, if we uh, we have seen what are the different possible reactions, global reaction, elementary reactions, how they need to be addressed. And also we elaborated the um, concept of chemical time scale. And in today's lecture, we will be considering reaction mechanisms and it is mainly uh, and it is part two of this reactant mechanism, it is mainly dealt with the practical uh, um, considerations of some reaction systems. Uh, so, this is the uh, uh, summary of this today's lecture and here uh, in this lecture number 25 that is reaction mechanism part 2, first we will introduce the concept of chemical kinetics with global and elementary reactions and uh, then we will look into the equilibrium products of products of combustions which we have discussed earlier. Now, in this lecture, we will try to focus on very specific chemical mechanisms that are of interest for combustions. First one is the very common phenomena which is used in the rocket propulsion systems and it is uh, called as hydrogen oxygen reaction systems. Then uh, the uh, another one is carbon monoxide formations when we have uh, when in the IC engines when the fuels are not burnt completely and it makes the formation of carbon monoxide. Then there are also issues of uh, formation of nitric oxide NOx formations when we do not run the engines at its appropriate uh, fuel ratio or equivalence ratio. Then we will move on to basically for all the three cases we will see that what type of reactions are very important and for which uh, it leads to this formation like CO or NOx. Another uh, important concept that we are also going to introduce that when fuel gets oxidized, how, uh, how all the molecules of the fuel gets burnt and, and um, the way how they have been formed. And when you say oxidation of the fuel and we are ma our main concern is the fuel is nothing but your hydrocarbon fuel. So, the basically speaking till this point of time whatever we have covered we will try to look into the practical glimpses that uh, which are normally the conventional issues nowadays uh, um, to look into the reaction mechanism of practical systems. Just to give uh, preliminary introductions, we all know that we have global and elementary reactions and when a global reaction we see fuel and oxidizer as a whole and it gives combustion products. And this rate of uh, rate at which the fuel gets consumed is a function of the global rate coefficients and concentrations of fuels and oxidizer. So, based on which we can define the order of reactions. Now, and, and, and these uh, and when you look into the elementary reactions, so the elementary reactions uh, if you see fuel gets dissociated, oxidizer also gets dissociated and they form some kind of elementary reactions, they categorized as unimolecular, bimolecular, termolecular reactions. And in fact, these reactions are nothing but the chain initiation reactions chain um, propagation reactions and also chain termination reactions. So, through this process they are not seen as a globally, but they are formed during the reactions and also they are also destroyed during after the products have been formed. So, and they, they are called as elementary reactions. So, our tendency is to find out in this lecture that uh, what are the elementary reactions that are being formed in various reaction mechanisms uh, and we will in particular we will be discussing about H2O2 systems, carbon monoxide oxidation, 
nitric oxide formations these three are important. And in particular when you look at uh, carbon um, hydrocarbon fuel combustion with air uh, we may, will have two cases one is stoichiometric cases where CO2 formation and H2O formation is quite natural. But when we will de deal with the uh, uh, non stoichiometric situations either the fuel can be rich or lean. So, based on that the formation of CO, CO, O2, H2 and N2 also becomes predominant and to some extent when the temperature is very high this N2 can also break and they can take part the formation of NO. Uh, so, this is the background of uh, these today's discussions. Now, even if you look at the uh, uh, discussion points of earlier like one case where methane propane air mixture gives the major products of products of combustion as CO2, H2O, O2 and N2. So, they are in that is that they those things are formed during lean combustions and you can see uh, these concentrations of all the components or species they vary with equivalence ratio and also their uh, mole fractions sometimes increases sometimes decreases and one point of time they reach a maximum. And in addition to that when we have lean combustions we reach uh, the we can plot the adiabatic flame temperatures where we can ensure what is the maximum temperature that we can achieve during this methane air combustion process. Uh, now when you move on to reach combustion process this the same mole fractions are also relevant um, important and they are also formed. Apart from this when you have rich combustions you can see the formation of O, CO, OH, NO um, then oxygen and all these things are formed and their concentration varies with uh, uh, when you increase the equivalence ratio. Now the question arises why these are formed what is the mechanisms? And uh, while uh, when these are formed uh, I mean uh, from where they started arising and in fact all these are radicals they form in between sometimes they come out as a product and sometimes they do not. So, the uh, our point of discussion today will be that how these uh, uh, for the formation of these components during a combustion process what are the elementary reactions that accelerates these formations and if at all they are formed uh, uh, what is the condition of the fuel in terms of its equivalence ratio whether it is a rich or lean first thing. Second thing is that effect of temperature because when the reactions when the products are formed when the temperature is increased then effect of temperature has to be taken into account. So, this is these three these two things are very basics for the uh, reaction mechanisms. Now, first reaction that we are going to discuss and it is very common that hydrogen and oxygen reaction systems. Uh, we all know that hydrogen is a fuel nowadays and also it is a green fuel and also uh, and oxygen is oxidizer and when they are closely related when they mix they also form water which is uh, uh, which is a friendly liquid and it is used for day to day life. And also in some situations when these hydrogen or oxygen they mix they can be behave in explosive manner. So, the control of uh, hydrogen and oxygen is very vital because it is uh, mainly used in the rocket propulsion systems. Uh, in a rocket propulsion systems ox usually oxygen tanks is being carried out and hydrogen tank also be, is being carried out and they are kept in a, a liquid form in liquidified form so that we can have a higher density. Now, if at all they need to be stored combinedly then under what circumstances they behave in a friendly manner and other circumstances they behave in a um, explosive manner. So, this is uh, this this is the very basic bottom line of uh, this H2O2 systems. So, if you look at closely this H2O2 systems 
the many reaction species and in particular there are about 8 important species and these 8 species are hydrogen, oxygen, water, OH radical, oxygen atom, hydrogen atom, HO2, HO2 is a uh, another compound and H2O2 uh, the combination uh, system. Now, uh, out of this uh, H2 is HO2 when HO2 is formed it is very friendly, but these react radicals when they form OH, OH and they are actually uh, chain initiation or chain propagating reactions and they keeps on spreading as and when uh, they get a very good environment I mean uh, required that is required pressure and temperature if they get they uh, make their chain uh, in a growing manner. So, the reaction during these phases the changes of reaction pathways which is a function of temperature and pressure it can results in various regimes of explosive and non explosive behavior. So, let us understand what are this uh, how it can form I mean in H2O2 system what may happen. There are two important case happens uh, during the initiation process if the temperature is very high then we have may have will have this kind of inter interactions H2 in a third body with high temperature um, uh, collision they can break as H plus H. But uh, if it is temperature is not too high then H2 and O2 they will not break rather H2 and O2 they will combinedly form try to form HO2. And this HO2 is HO2 is a friendly, but H is not. Uh, so, what it does is this H and depending on the temperatures OH and OH radicals they keeps on increasing the chain and uh, in this manner I mean in particular H can plus O2 can give O plus OH and even in some cases you can produce uh, you can find out OH again can react with H2 to form water and O again mixing with H2O can give OH. So, these are chain in uh, chain reactions that uh, that uh, keeps on happening if you if the pressure and temperatures are friendly and uh, these uh, things keeps on happening till entire fuel or entire H2 is consumed and at uh, one point of time we will we'll have a chain terminating reactions. Uh, and this chain terminating reaction when you see either you can you can get uh, in the form of water formations or we may have oxygen again directly and there is also formation of hydro peroxy radicals and hydrogen peroxide. And in fact, this HO2 and HO2, uh, HO2 and H2O2, these are nothing but your hydro uh, peroxy radical and hydrogen peroxide. When they form, they try to stop the chain. I mean, I mean, we can say that reaction is a complete process, and there is no further, and they they are not inactive. So, when such a situation arrives, so we can say the HO2 formation is active, and Again, this HOT sometimes if we get a very friendly environment, it again can start um, um, other radicals as well. So, why I'm what I am trying to say all these reactions are dependent on pressure and temperatures. Now, let us see what is the effect of pressure and temperatures. And this particular figure uh, talks about the pressure and temperature plot in a H2O2 systems. Uh, I mentioned earlier that in some uh, environment of pressure and temperature conditions H2 and O2 can stay together and in other situation they can behave uh, in a explosive manner. So, we will categorize in two, uh, two philosophy one is no explosion other is the explosions and we will try to see under what conditions we will have explosion under what conditions we will have no explosion. Now, if there are explosion which reactions are predominant if there is no explosion which why it is not uh, why there is no explosion. So, such things needs to be answered in this plot. So, what has been plotted in in y axis we have pressure in millimeter of Hg and the pressure can starts from 1 millimeter of Hg means which is almost a vacuum conditions and you can go up to 10,000 
mm of Hg and somewhere we can say somewhere you have 750 mm of Hg we can draw this line. So, which is normally called as atmosphere. Okay. So, if you draw this is your atmospheric line. Now, in this atmospheric line we can say uh, this uh, we do not cross uh, we are mostly in the no explosion zone. And let us see what is its effect of temperatures. Now, when we look at temperatures typically the behavior of H2O2 system uh, comes when the temperatures range is between 400 to close to 580 degree centigrade. And at 1 millimeter of Hg, uh, we can store the hydrogen and oxygen systems uh, at 580 degree centigrade. So, this is what the summary is. Now, let us see how you look at this graph or how you interpret this graph uh, in a um, so that we can understand the chain reactions and the chain terminating reactions, why this chain reaction happens, how it initiates, how it propagates and, how and finally, how it terminates. So, normally when it uh, terminates it forms with HO2 or H2O2 and when it does not uh, when it have chain reactions it tries to form OH, OH or O all these things. And why this system is important because it is mainly required for rocket propulsion systems. Uh, what we are looking at the temperature and pressures corresponding to initial ch charging uh, conditions of in a spherical vessel which contains reactants. Like uh, in a, a spherical vessels we are putting hydrogen and oxygen and try to see what it is uh, what it try to see with the thermodynamic behavior in terms of pressure temperature plot. Now, imagine a one particular case like we are looking at 500 degree centigrade. Now, the, and, and I am just explaining at one particular case when you are looking at, uh, at at 500 degree centigrade and I am just drawing a vertical line. What it means is that if I go along this line, I meet we can have different pressures okay? and, and we can see a curve is a nature of is typically a sinusoidal curve and uh, this uh, 500 degree if you draw a vertical line it cuts uh, this uh, pressure axis or inter, uh, I mean it cuts this curve at different pressure values. So, let us start the first line that means we are looking at a uh, vertical temperature at 500 degree centigrade with lowest pressure of 1 mm and we are going up. So, what do we see now when we are going up from 500 degree centigrade to this point. So, it meets the first curve it's close to somewhere 1.5 mm of Hg that means this pressure corresponds to 1.5 mm. Now, in this zone if you look at the hydrogen and oxygen systems we see there is no explosion. So, what it means why there is no explosion because in the initial step it is just an initial step the uh, radicals are about to form, but they have not started the chain sequence and when if that all they are formed uh, and these reactions when they keep on propagating and, uh, and finally, they get destroyed in the walls of the vessels. So, what it means that when these radicals whatever form they are absorbed as products in the vessel wall or geometrical vessel wall. So, uh, why is a spherical because uh, it all depends on the geometry how you are storing. So, these wall reactions break the chain that means when the reaction and goes and hits this wall they normally break the chain I mean they are basically the culprits of um, the breaking the chain. So, that means the reactions is not further in, uh, initiated and also uh, the reaction do not get a um, good environment to proceed further. So, that is the reason there is no uh, there is no explosion till this point. Now, moving further in same line if you go vertically we will find the second limit of the curve 
and this refers to as 50 mm of Hg and uh, during this uh, during this particular phase we can see that there is a big explosion and why there is a big explosion you can see and that is mainly because the formation of O atom, OH atom and this chain keeps on propagating and when they keeps on propagating the walls of the spherical vessel is not sufficient to withstand or stop their uh, propagations and these reactions dominate over the wall reactions I mean that means wall cannot absorb further. So, because the wall cannot absorb further it try to explodes. So, it means that when your storage medium is at 500 degree centigrade any point above from 1.5 mm to 50 mm of Hg there will be an explosion that means we cannot store H2O2 simultaneously in a, a spherical vessel and uh, uh, you can hear uh, in a generic chain mechanism the increase in the pressure will result in higher concentration radicals in a linear fashion and the reaction rate is increased geometrically. Now, moving further in same 500 degree uh, line if you go vertically till above 50 mm of Hg to up to close to 3000 mm of Hg. So, during this point you can see there is no explosion. So, what it means? So, during this phase uh, during this region we can store them without any explosion uh, because during this form uh, during this phase the chain mechanisms try to terminate. Why it try to terminate? Because it gives gets suitable pressure and temperature regime for which the formation of HO2 or H2O2 becomes possible and when these are when they form they are typically relatively unreactive and uh, and we say that uh, the chain is going to and the chain reactions are almost terminated and the further branching is not possible and because of this region there is no explosion. And this will go on till we reach uh, the 3000 mm of Hg. So, in the so we say there are three limit first limit is and three limits and all are on 500 degree centigrade line one limit is 1.5 mm of Hg second limit is the 50 mm of Hg third limit is 3000 mm of Hg. Now, but again beyond 3000 of mm of Hg in the same temperature line if you go there will be further explosion. So, what we can say that when the formation of HO2 or H2O2 is, uh, is predominant then they try to the radicals effect is no longer severe and the reaction try to settle down and there is no explosions. So, this is the uh, complete philosophy of hydrogen oxygen reaction systems and in fact, it uh, the models needs to be developed to study the combustion phenomena and uh, experimentally it is very vital that you should know that what pressure and temperature we should store H2 and O2 so that it will not uh, explode. The next reaction mechanism is carbon monoxide oxidation. Carbon monoxide uh, uh, normally forms when we do not have the stoichiometric hydrocarbon fuel oxidation with uh, air. Uh, if you can see that when there is in a non stoichiometric case we will have CO2 and CO formation simultaneously and because uh, and if at all this has to be and again we have hydrogen also and nitrogen also. So, now, uh, this hydrogen the, the and also we have water. Uh, so, what happens if you look at closely hydrocarbon monoxide emissions the process of CO can uh, form uh, or uh, when you say when you see when a CO reacts with water it gives CO2 plus O, 
but it is a very slow process and the process and we can say but uh, very slow process, but it gives a oxygen atom and we can say it is a radical and but this radical will uh, create a uh, um, hydroxyl radical and, and that is what that is where the chain branching starts. And when it forms the OH radical C again react with CO, it gives CO2. So, it is a key oxidation reaction because that is the oxidation process. Uh, so, what we see is that directly with CO2, this is a slow process, but through and uh, through a route of hydroxyl radicals, it is a fast process. And uh, again, during this chain propagation reactions, there is also another a feedback oxidation reactions where H will also gives O2, it will give you OH and O2. OH and O2 will uh, initiate this hydroxyl reactions, O will initiate this chain initiation reactions. So, this process keeps on happening. So, the combined effect is that the how you are going to do the oxidation of carbon monoxide. Either to, to do that, we must do through uh, the HO2 or H2 route because they have tremendous effect in enhancing the oxidation rate. The next important mechanism is oxides of nit nitrogen formation. Typically, we call this as NOx. Now, this NOx formation uh, is also equally important in a combustion process both in rich combustion and lean combustion. And uh, why it is more important? Because this NO formation least has a uh, important contribution to air pollutions and mostly we should avoid the, this NO formation. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the combustion process of hydrocarbon fuels, the nitric oxides or NO2 is formed by three chemical important mechanism or roots. So, you can say the, NO, uh, the NOx formations comes by three important mechanism. First one is a thermal mechanisms or we in a scientific way we, we call this as a Zeldovich mechanisms. And this thermal mechanism we will recognize only when you have temperature is uh, above 1800 degree Kelvin. So, it means that during a reaction process when the temperature is above uh, 1800 degree Kelvin thermal or Zeldovich mechanisms dominates. But uh, this, this thumb rule is also not true because we have seen in our previous slides that uh, when we have propane air mixture combustions, NO is formed throughout all the equivalence ratio. Uh, then that we, even the NO is, is also seen in the low equivalence ratio, lower equivalence ratio, uh, but still the temperature is not too high. So, for that Zeldovich mechanism or thermal mechanism is answerless, uh, for that reason another uh, mechanism that comes in what we call as Fenimore or Prompt mechanisms. And this Prompt mechanism arises and it is a short time scale event and, uh, and it is answerable for rich mixtures for which equivalence ratio less than 1.2. But still this is also not possible because most of the combustion process uh, when you do uh, the equivalence ratio is maintained between 0.8 to 1.2. So, bo both Fenimore or Prompt mechanism and Zeldovich mechanisms they are sufficient to answer both the cases. But there are some situation at low temperatures if at all and during lean mixtures phi less than 0.5 if there are NO formations we call them with their uh, they call this as a NO2 intermediate mechanisms. So, this is the three ways that NO can form over wide range of equivalence ratio with respect to temperatures, uh, low temperature, medium temperature and high temperature during a reaction process. So, as a rule of thumb we do not consider any more uh, we do not we, we, we consider the thermal or Zeldovich mechanism only when the temperature is very high. Uh, when the when the NO formation happens in a short duration time scale uh, answer will come from the Fenimore or Prompt mechanisms and of course, it is for rich combustions 
and when you talk about lean mixture and low temperatures n2o mechanism is plays a crucial role now let us see how they behave so i mentioned this again i revisit this slide again as you can see over wide range of equivalence ratio we can see the formation of no no is throughout the all the equivalence ratio even uh, even your adiabatic temperature is almost more than uh, close to 2278 kelvin at that point it is quite obvious that we will have thermal or geldovich mechanism now let us understand the first one that when this thermal or geldovich mechanism happens what are the elementary reactions first thing is that o oxygen will react with n2 it can form no plus n again this n can also react with oxygen to give no and no plus o and if we have radicals in the systems no can also react with oh they all also can give no so no formation uh, can happen in three ways and uh, the rate at which they form it all depends with respect to the rate coefficients so there are these are some sample expressions that talks about how no formation is comes into picture through these three different routes then next mechanism is fenimore or uh, prandt mechanism so here when you look at here you have to see that this formation is mainly the equivalence ratio up to 1.2 and when i say equivalence ratio of 1.2 and if you try to map this for a combustion process you can correlate that they are in the zone of laminar premixed flames and during this process there is a formation of hydrogen cyanide nco and these two uh, we call them as a chain initiation chain se sequence reactions and these reactions finally gives rise to no formations so it starts with ch n2 with this then we'll have uh, n formations and h uh, and hcn again reacts with oxygen and it will give nco nco will give nitrogen oxide and uh, nh and nh will react with n plus h2 and find n plus o s gives no so when this no formation is there and through this in a sequence process uh, through an chain initiation and chain sequence process and because of th this regions uh, we say that and all these things happens in a very short duration events maybe in a milliseconds or less time scale uh, so it is called as a prompt mechanisms another important consequence is that when we have higher equivalence ratio and side by side temperature is also high then we can say geldovich mechanism can couple with spenimore mechanism when both the mechanisms happens this uh, this an plus no will give you n2 plus o means uh, in fact on a spenimore uh, mechanisms if there is a uh, geldovich mechanism which is dominates it all it tries to uh, um, destroy the no formations i also mentioned that why it is called as a prompt no mechanisms many a times the presence of o and h2 atom we call this as a su super equilibrium conditions so because of this reasons the formation of uh, uh, no is more uh, is accelerated now moving further in the third category we have n2o intermediate mechanisms and in this intermediate mechanisms where o plus n2 gives n2o plus a third body and uh, then this n2o can react with hydrogen to form no and uh, plus nh and o plus n2o can also give no plus no so and this uh, uh, this typical situation happens we call this as a fuel lean conditions at low uh, temperature conditions and there are some situations uh, when uh, no formation is uh, initiated through a solid fuel because uh, if you look at a typical solid fuel like uh, um, coal um, they have nitrogen in their molecular structures 
and when you have nitrogen then molecular structures and typically they are by um, 2 percent by mass and they they form rapidly if they get a very um, friendly environment they form rapidly through this hydrogen cyanide or ammonia route to form uh, uh, NO and this this will fall under the prompt NO mechanisms. So, if you look at the complete NO formation analysis if you have a hydrocarbon and fuel and from any route if you come uh, this is a complete process that talks about all the three mechanisms either uh, the NO formation can happen with H or OH for radicals or through HCN or through HNCO, NCO. So, this picture gives the complete picture of NO formations at uh, different temperature and pressure conditions. And uh, to give another kind of emphasis that how this uh, NO formations affects in a in an atmospheric situations. We can say that in the atmospheric atmosphere nitric oxide ultimately oxidizes to form nitrogen dioxide and, and which is more important to production of acid rain and uh, petrochemical uh, smog. So, we can say NO plus HO2 it can give NO2 plus OH this day uh, NO2 formation process and NO is also gets destroyed through reaction with hydrogen and uh, then uh, then uh, this NO2 also gets destroyed through oxygen uh, and through and this com combination process happens in the atmosphere itself. Many a times when this uh, formation of NO becomes uh, an NO2 becomes significant it leads to acid rain or petrochemical smog which is not a desirable with respect to atmospheric viewpoint. And we can say uh, these formations are happens mainly due to the radicals like HO2, NO2 and, um, and of course, uh, the atmosphere has different uh, temperature zones low temperature to high temperatures that effect is also very significant at what um, uh, altitude at what locations we are this NO2 formations happens. And in the last I will just try to explain the concept of oxidation fuel of fuel. Uh, in fact, we have also seen uh, the many combustion reaction mechanism processes, but here the oxidation of fuels is co comes on in a very uh, a complicated process a complete understanding is required. Uh, but I will just give some introduction that when you say oxidation of fuels we are essentially looking after looking at the hydrocarbons and maybe for higher paraffins and alkanes for which you we can say chemical formula C n and H 2 n plus 2 they are characterized in three step process. In the first step fuel molecule is attacked by radicals to form an intermediate which is in the olefins or hydrogen. Second one is the, uh, the intermediate process that oxidizes, oxidizes to form CO and H2O and third one the CO and remaining H2 they are oxidized to form CO2 and H2O. So, this is the three oxidation process and in fact, we are not going to uh, details, but a simple uh, uh, hydrocarbon is nothing but a methane and it is a unique hydrocarbon and it is a less reactive. But even though it is less reactive, it consists of 277 elementary reactions with 49 species and uh, 0.1 second residence time of each process. That means, it forms and they get destroyed. So, the residence time is of each species is close to on average residence time you can say about 0.1 seconds. And since methane has also tetrahedral uh, CH bond energy which is exhibits which, which gives a very unique combustion characteristics. Uh, it has a very high ignition temperature, low flame speed and, uh, and it is a not reactive in terms of petrochemical smoke chemistry. That means, methane if you are using it is a, is a good fuel for uh, with respect to atmospheric viewpoint. Uh, the reaction pathways 
for this methane can be uh, modeled in two temperature range which is one is mainly less than 1500 degree um, Kelvin, other is the high temperature oxidation which is higher than the uh, two, um, more than 2200 Kelvin in a well stirred reactor with homogeneous isothermal uh, environment. So, for more details we can refer the books, we are not going to details. Uh, um, more details on this um, reaction mechanisms, but in summary what we can say that the mechanism of oxidation of wells is a very complicated process involving many number of reactions and it has to be modeled in an accurate manner uh, to find uh, and reaction kinetics has to be included simultaneously uh, um, and such reaction mechanisms we call this as a uh, chemical reactor which will come in the subsequent um, uh, modules. So, with this, uh, this is the complete description about this model and uh, module that is chemical kinetics. So, before we close, let us understand some uh, one of the basic problem uh, which we have covered in our earlier lecture with a concept of EGR. So, EGR why you have introduced here because it has a definite link with uh, um, nitric oxide oxidations. Normally exhaust gas is recirculated in the engine uh, in an IC engine uh, to control the NOx formations. So, through this problem we will try to see how much EGR is advisable to be circulated into the engine uh, for an efficient combustion uh, process. So, let us understand the problem first theoretical maximum combustion temper temperature uh, in an engine in a by while burning an equivalence burning an isoctane with an equivalence ratio 0.833 is 2400 degree Kelvin. Now, th at this temperature this NOx problem uh, formation is quite important. So, it is reduced to, um, to lower these temperatures. Uh, to 2200 degree Kelvin, what it we do is uh, instead of uh, sending the exhaust gas directly to the atmosphere, we recirculate into the engines. So, we call this as a exhaust gas recirculation into the engines. Now, now question is how we have to find out the percentage of EGR, how much percentage we should advise. And of course, there are some temperature you need to look at, all the data has to be referred at these temperatures. So, exhaust gases are expected temperature is 1000 degree Kelvins and uh, we also need to find out the, um, uh, the product enthalpy of formation for the products at these temperatures. So, to solve this problem first thing what we should uh, uh, attempt is that what happens for an isoactant conditions what an equivalence ratio 0.833. So, 0.833 means it is uh, it is a lean combustion and it is if you can closely find the value it is 20 percent excess air. Now, if you do that then reaction could be C8 H18 which is isoctane plus 15O2 which means it is 20 percent excess air plus 15 into 3.76 N2 and that gives 8 CO2 plus 9 H2O plus 2.5 O2 plus 15 into 3.76 and 2. Now, we have to write another equations when uh, by incorporating EGR. So, we do not know how much exhaust gas is going to be recirculated. So, basically it has effect of an uh, effect only effect of for with respect to NO. So, we have to revise this equation with EGR. So, we can rewrite this equation as C8H18 which remains 
as it is plus 15 O2 plus 15 into 3.76 and 2. Here we will add some x and 2. We do not know when the exhaust gas is recirculated, it comes with in the reactant site again. So, how much we are introducing N2 into this system, we do not know, and it also should give 8 CO2 plus 9 H2O plus 2.5 O2 plus 15 into 3.76 plus x times n2. So, this reaction needs to be handled properly uh, to do that. So, we have to uh, recall this equations uh, enthalpy of reactants and products that has to be matched. Uh, we can write this equation N i into H i F F O plus delta H i that is for products and this product is at 2200 Kelvin and that has to be matched with reactants summation of N i H F O plus delta H and this is for reactants. Uh, and and we are looking at the reactants have some this data to be 1000 Kelvin temperatures. So, the formation of these things uh, we need to do that. So, for each case we need to find out and we have to note the values 1 at 2200 Kelvin. So, this enthalpy of formation value first thing for CO2 product side we have CO2 uh, we can write HFO minus 393522 and delta H is equal to 103562. Then we have H2O for which Uh, this number is uh, these all these units are uh, kilo joule per kilo mole this is minus 241826 delta h is equal to 83153 for o2 hfo formation is zero because it is stable gas but delta H is 66770. Then we have N2, uh, HFO is also 0 stable gas and delta H is 63362. So, this is for products and for reactants, we have to note down this value at 1000 Kelvin for N2 and rest at 300 Kelvin. N2 means that 1000 degree per EGR. So, noting this value for C8 H18 HFO minus 259280 delta H 73473 O2 HFO is equal to 0 delta H is equal to 12499 N2 HFO 0 and this number is delta H is 11937 and this value is at 300 Kelvin and at 1000 Kelvin this delta H value is 21463. So, this 1000 Kelvin will refer to component X. So, based on this 
formulation by inserting this value we will have a big uh, expressions, but by inserting the value the we can solve these equations with for x as unknown and that x is 16.28 moles and this when converted to mass. So, 16.28 into molecular weight of N2 28. So, this gives 455.6 kg. So, means uh, this much kg of uh, EGR is being has to be circulated to bring down to this temperature. So, correspondingly we can find out what is the mass of air which is 15 into 4.76 uh, into 28.97 this many moles and molecular weight will give 2070.6 kg and mass of fuel not mass flow rate. So, it is a mass flow we can say 1 molecular weight of fuel 114 1 mole into molecular weight. So, it is, it is 114 kg. So, ultimately we can find out what is the total mass m is equal to m a plus m f plus m e g r. This is 2 640.4 kg and we can say percentage is here. So, this number would be 455.6 divided by 2640.4. So, this is about 17.3 percent. So, basically speaking normally when exhaust gas is recirculated in the engines its typical number is limited within the uh, 20 percent of EGR. Then only we can get the better uh, or effective utilization of energy in the engines from the fuels. So, with this I conclude this lecture for today. Thank you for your attention and also we, we completed this module uh, that is chemical kinetics. Once again, thank you for your attention.